This is Herman Osterwick, and in this presentation, we're going to talk about how to troubleshoot the DICOM modality worklist. The DICOM modality worklist is the mechanism by which a modality, such as a CT, MRI, ultrasound, or any digital modality that would want to be able to talk to the information system, would pull back the worklist that the technologist will use to select the right patient demographics, ordering, and scheduling information. So we're going to discuss the, some of the common issues. We'll talk about uh, how to configure a simulator to simulate and uh, validate some of these transactions. And we'll actually show you the demo uh, with some of the screens. And we'll talk about some additional resources. So let's get started. Uh, first of all, uh, the common issues are, number one, uh, misinterpretation or uh, misunderstanding the query. So we use this modality, let's say a CT scanner, wants to talk to the uh, modality workers provider, and it could be the, in, in the packs, it could be in a RIS, or it could be as an independent broker, depending on the particular configuration. But anyway, here's this query, and, it, and it's not correctly interpreted for whatever reason. So that would be the number one issue that we want to troubleshoot. Number two, which is relatively common as well, the response might be too little. So I do a query, and what happens is that not all the information comes back that I ask for. Let's say I do a query, I want my accession number and the patient ID, and but also the name and maybe the modality uh, that I was scheduled for. And the information that comes back may be only half of the information. Another uh, potential issue would be that the response it would be too much, meaning I ask for, let's say, five attributes, the name, the ID, the birth date, sex, and modality, and maybe the scheduled uh, station name. But instead, after I do ask for those attributes, the, the database dump you, I don't know, 20 or 30 uh, attributes back, and, and then the modality gets confused. Last but not least, um, the response might be filtered and interpreted incorrectly. That means when I ask, for example, for I'll need the CT uh, uh, exams that are supp supposed to be performed on the inpatient uh, radiology, for example, CT, but I get everything back, including from all the outpatients and another three clinics, that means that it's not filtered correctly because I might ask in my request for only the uh, only the uh, worklist entries for my inpatient, but I get way too much back. So, incorrect interpretation at the database, or filtered here, or at the receiver side, uh, filtered incorrectly, so I get not a match, not a complete information on my screen here that I want. Now, so these are the most common issues, and how we're going to simulate that, uh, we're going to talk about next. So a typical test environment would consist of two components. So here's my uh, CT scanner and here's my modality workplace provider. So this is my clinical system. And what I want to do is I want to uh, create a test environment that I have a modality simulator and a workplace simulator. So I now can crisscross anything that I want. I can go from my regular modality to my workplace simulator, right? And find out what's going back, see whether the problem is here. Or I can have another modality, right? And talk to my of course, workless simulator to make sure everything works, but also talking to my workless provider, right? So my workless provider. So I can find exactly, find out what's going on. And the advantage is here I have all the tools to do my uh, checking and can look at all the attributes that's coming back. And in addition, optionally, you can also even have a sniffer that shows even more exactly what's going on on the line. And I'm not going to dwell on the uh, sniffer issue here, but there's another um, YouTube uh, video that you can download and you can watch that how to use the sniffer. So if you're interested and you still cannot find out exactly what's going on with these tools, you might want to also connect the sniffer because that will tell you exactly what's going on on the line. So like I mentioned, we're using the uh, OT dice, which you can download from the OTAC website. And in addition, what you we're going to use is the Conquest. Uh, it's actually also a, a PAX archive, a very, very uh, neat tool, but also has a modality worklist provider in there that we can use as a simulator. So uh, both uh, systems should be installed. And 
one thing that I actually do is I, I take the conquest and create a virtual machine so I can actually have only only need to have one laptop where I have my modality simulator and have the uh, modality workless provider simulator as well on one computer just by taking the conquest into another virtual machine on my computer. So when we look at the OT Dice Modality Simulator, uh, we see that there's a Query SCU button, and we actually have a setup query. But before we do any communication to our, our Modality Simulator, from the Modality Simulator to our Modality Workers Provider, you always want to do an echo first. So uh, in this case, I do an echo, I do a send, and what I see is that the status is success. So I successfully uh, can talk with my uh, Modality Simulator, and then in my remote result, I can see Conquest as a V1. This is my uh, AE title for my uh, simulator modality provider. Um, and we'll actually communicate me back. So I can communicate. So now I'm going to do my query. Conquest themselves is kind of cool. So here you see the welcome screen of the Conquest DICOM server. It's a little bit older version that I have installed, but basically they'll all be the same. And then when you look at the server, there are actually um, different things you can do. You can manage the patients, the studies, and then the work list is what we want to concentrate on. So when you do go, you look at the work list, uh, so you get a, a query of all of them. In my case, I actually created a couple of test patients. I basically have seven patients, but it's very easy to, uh, to create a uh, another book list entry, you click on add entry and you can type in all the information that you want and then go back, it will automatically be added to, uh, to an entry in the work list. So we know we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven um, entries in our, in our work list that we want to query for. So if we go back to our, our um, OT dice, we should be able to uh, perform the query. So we do query. <clears throat> we set up the query, so we select modality worklist information model. And the first query I'm going to do, I'm just going to click on the patient name, ID. I have my scheduled step, procedure step sequence, AE title, date and time, and modality. So when I do my uh, setup, I do my query, and basically I can see all my responses back. So I did an open query, so you would expect all of the entries to go back um, from the uh, from the provider. So in addition, you can see basically response number one, response number two, and all the way to the bottom, I should be able to get seven responses back, and that's what I got here. You know, the last response is number seven, uh, with the status of success. So I asked <coughs> um, the whole database. Now, when you do this wide open query, you might not want to do that to your, uh, your production database, because uh, you might get quite a few responses back. So what we want to do is see how the behavior is of my modality workers provider. So, for example, when I go back to setup query, I said I want to do a an, an, a single value matching on patient name. So I double click on here. I do O star, for example, right, and return, and that means I'm now going to select only the patients that end with a uh, with a last name and O. And then again, I do my query, and here you see only one response come back. It was Mr. Omar right here. See. So you can see you can play with it. Then in this case we have only like the patient name, the ID, and the modality, AE title, date, and time. But what we can do, we can actually change. Um, we can say we want to find out whether my workless provider also provides the station name, the description, uh, and might want to find out whether it also do my uh, procedure ID and my reason, right? And maybe some comments. And if you click on all of those, you do a clear. And I do the same query, and then you find out, oh, that's pretty cool. I get um, everything back that I asked for. So you start date, uh, start time, uh, the description, the name, and the request to proceed ID. So you can find out exactly the behavior of your modality workless provider. So you see this pretty, uh, pretty powerful tool. Um, again, you can add any patients you want, and you can select any attributes that you want on your modality simulator. So in conclusion, if you have an issue with your modality simulator, what are the tools that you need? A modality simulator, right? modality worklist provider simulator, and if you really need to know all the details and you really have some tricky issues, also a sniffer. And with those three components, I'm sure you can solve any potential issues. And then you can go back to the vendor or to your IT department and station at your broker, your modality workers provider, 
or at your uh, particular modality by setting up the modality worklist. So, um, for more information on DICOM, there is a, we provide face-to-face -face classes, online and computer-based training, textbook and certification. You can go to the OTAC website, but if you want to learn more about how to use these tools, we have an intensive workshop um, that you can go to. And there's also some other videos, like I mentioned, on how to use Wireshark and how to set up your configuration. If you have a question about how to set up your modality, there's another um, introduction of video about that as well. And we're always open to more questions and if there's anything that you think we should be concentrating on, please let us know. Thank you for your attention and see you next time.